Catherine, thank you very much for being here. Uh, one, the first question, history brought us together. Uh, will the economy tear us apart? I think it's a very difficult question to answer, but I want to answer in two parts. First, if you compare it to any other deep economic crisis that we've had, for example, between the two world wars, we're not at war yet. So in that case, tearing us apart is all relative. It's, it doesn't look like it's going to go in warlike or conflict-like man manner. However, what this crisis has displayed is a deeper divisions in Europe over national lines or over regional lines that we haven't really seen before. It's the north versus the south, the east versus the west. Uh, do the Germans like the Greek? Do the Greek like the Germans? And also a lot of stereotyping, uh, cultural stereotyping, which of course cannot be very productive or constructive for political dialogue. So if we move back to the actual problem rather than stereotyping particular groups, then I don't think it will be tearing us apart. So something is different than before. However, I, tearing apart might be too extreme. Uh, thank you very much. And the second question, we know that the major parties still uh, win, the centrist parties, if you will, the more pro-European parties, as we, as we both know very well, to still, all by difficulty, win elections. And generally speaking, the, the EU framework is still uh, in pace and in good shape, regardless of the crisis and irrespective of all this uh, discourse of, uh, with respect to the Euro and, and, and the South and all that. Still, however, these parties are not popular anymore, at least are not majoritarian anymore among young people, especially in the South, but also in the North. And if you combine that with the very high levels of unemployment, at least relatively speaking with respect to the past, even in the North, and especially this unemployment being concentrated among primarily the youth, the question then becomes, are we generating, are we creating a generation of anti-Europeans? Well, I think we're creating or what we're having is a, is a generation of disaffected citizens, of people who don't have any traditional ties anymore to political parties, who shop around at every election seeing which party they like most, and are overall quite disillusioned with politics, if I you know, can make such generalizations, but I think that some of the data seems to suggest that. In terms, so that's the kind of, so that's the kind of playing field, level playing field in which parties are operating right now in, amongst the youth. Then if we were to link that back particularly to the EU, it's twofold. On the one hand, you have a younger generation that flies with EasyJet to particular areas, that has roaming in on their on their mobile phones, that all is is or that live in other areas and study there, which is all done by the EU, which probably I presumably they like, and on average, actually, some of the analysis shows that they're more pro EU. However, they are quite, quite critical of this regime, not you know, taking it up as an historical legacy, something that prevented wars. That doesn't really feed into their consciousness, if you will. So in that way, although European integration or the support for European integration I don't think is that low among younger generations, it's quite fickle and it depends on if the EU as a, as a system is able to perform or if economies within the EU or Eurozone specifically are able to perform. So, you know, it must be, it might be, a, bit of a more troubled outlook than we've had seen for, for, for generations before. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome.